I'm joined today by Jay and Aura. Jack and Ryan, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. How are things with yourselves? We are all right. It's getting warm out in New York, which is like the greatest time of the year for us. So I'm so jealous. It's disgusting yep. over here today. Oh, is it? Oh, no. Oh, like, honestly, at this point during the Zoom, I'm terrified that there's going to be like howls from the wind in the background. I haven't gone out for my walk today, so I'm restless oh. and bored. Very oh. jealous. I could tell as soon as you hopped on. Super um, restless. Super <laughs> restless. I know. So I'm ready. I'm ready for this. As I'm like, right, this is a purpose for today. Yeah, um, yeah. So obviously your song Bang, you know, it was massive. It was like in three different categories in the Billboard Hot 100, which is huge. It had 350 million streams. It's your sixth platinum tune, your platinum single. Like that, do you know, that's really hard follow up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, that's a, that's a good question. And the reason that we pause is because we think about that all the time. Like, how are we going to follow up? Should we follow up? You know? Yeah. I think we try to just take it one song at a time and yeah. think like, what is, what do we want to say right now? Not, not looking at like, what's, what's trendy or what's on the radio. It's like, no, what, what have we not done before? Cause that really excites us. Oh, we've never done a song like bang with a boom, 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 boom you know like evil sounding horns that's really exciting to us um and then we just kind of take it one song at a time if the next song sounds totally different from bang so be it who cares and tell me a little bit about um your new tune way less sad what what is that about yeah that is about honestly there's like a little bit of a story to that um that kind of leads to it we uh was it like three years ago where it started? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, no, it really like nine years ago. Right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So nine years ago, yeah, we were sitting on this uh, Simon and Garfunkel sample, um, which we we are enormous fans of Simon and Garfunkel. And we knew, okay, this sample, if you put it into a modern context, it could sound really cool. And we just never found the right song for it. So that was nine years ago. Then three years ago, we we do a lot of writing for other artists. So. Uh, Kaigo sent us this track and we were writing over it and uh, we wrote this chorus of don't you love it no I'm happy yet but I'm way less sad um, and he we sent it back to his label and it didn't work out for him but we kind of kept the chorus we we're like oh this chorus is kind of special let's hold on to it then like a year ago we were writing for Cardi B um, and she uh, her label like reached out like oh do you have any uh, good tracks for her and so we decided to take that Simon and Garfunkel song put it into more of a hip-hop context and we wrote this song around it they wanted to give it to a different rapper at, at their label and we were like you know what no actually we're gonna take the cardi b track <laughs> I'll take that back yeah yeah totally take the cardi b track take the kygo song kind of like smush it together and ajrify it and make it about our own lives and you know like uh, uh battling our own demons um, i mean it and, worked and, and it kind of <laughs> worked yeah it did and like i think it's very in tune I think with what's going on at the moment because nobody with the pandemic nobody right now can honestly say like I am fully grand I am happy this is great this is a-okay I love being stuck indoors all the time so I think it's like you find the little things in life that you get happiness from is that kind of what it's trying to say yeah I think it does relate to the time we're in definitely but I think it, it kind of relates to any time uh, where it's like is it is it okay to celebrate these little wins without feeling guilty? And this song is saying like, yeah, yeah, it's okay to celebrate the little wins. I'll go for a walk and I'll feel happy. That's my little thing that I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to have a nice dinner. Exactly. I'm going to make it yeah. cheap, toasty. It's the small things in life. Exactly. exactly, exactly. And like, I think you guys have been kind of busy enough in lockdown as well. You know, I saw that you did your first ever live stream gig and you kind of broke down how Bang as a song was constructed. I just thought it was so cool that you literally heard a knock on the door and that was kind of the baseline to your song. If I was able to do that, honestly, if I went around and took random noises from my house and I played it to people, they would probably think that I captured a sound of somebody burgling my house. So fair play. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you yeah you so we I guess because we've been doing this for like 15 years we've gotten a little bored with just like the standard snare sound and so we find if you like hit two remotes together and then pitch it down you're just automatically going to create a more interesting sound yeah I mean it's such a huge talent to be able to try and break you know take the extraordinary out of really ordinary things and kind of make that a song like it's it's really kind of unheard of that you'd be able to do that I just wouldn't be able to at all I'd be like that's a great sound Tara it's your pots banging just stop it it's not um 
And as well as that, like, it's really interesting to know that you guys kind of began out busking in Central Park. And I noticed there's a lot of New York City landmarks in your music video for Way Less Sad. Do you find it's kind of important to include your roots in your music? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, to expand on what you said, yeah, we did start out street performing. Um, that was like 16 years ago. And uh, that was kind of the first step that we took to try to do this professionally. And we really have New York to thank because they're the ones that uh, gave us literally the, I mean, the money that they gave us street performing is the money that we use to go to, you know, Guitar Center or Music Store and buy Pro Tools or go that day and buy a ukulele. And it's the same one that we still have in there that we used wow. to write and produce. So they they truly gave us the funds. We we, we weren't, you know, a wealthy family growing up. We didn't really know anyone. We, they gave us the funds that we needed to actually start doing this for real. So, and we love New York so much. We're never going to move out. It's like the warmest place in the world. So, so we have to just include it as much as possible. You're right. And you know, what's so weird is that I actually, my last ever holiday before lockdown was in New New York oh yeah so oh, I'm devastated even hearing like um that part in in Bang where you use the guy who does the voice oh, yeah. on the subway I was like oh just play that again I just want to hear it again oh that's so funny I love that that nostalgia feel oh so good um do you think as well because you guys are all brothers is there kind of an ease when you're kind of in the middle of your creative process when you're writing songs and when you're in the studio is there an ease of being able to kind of communicate really honestly and in the most raw way possible because you're so comfortable with each other or do you find that that might hinder you a little bit because you want one thing you know Adam wants one thing and then it's just a big mess what do you think about that well um I guess what we usually say is that every you know sibling relationship is different there's some sibling relationships that obviously don't work like Oasis obviously didn't really work out um for them and and you know that's their own thing but it, like you know like friends you know, like some some friends are extremely honest with some friends are a little more you know service level um but with us it's actually worked out extremely well like the answer to your question is yes we can be as honest as, as possible and we really don't want to waste any time when it comes to writing music uh we had so many years of absolute failure uh, um and and so few years of absolute success so we said let's not you know let's not waste time let's just do figure out what's the best for the music and in order to get that you have to be honest you know Ryan pitches an idea for writing and I just when I know it's bad I'm yeah. not going to be like oh maybe we can twist it it's just a bad idea when I pitch a melody he knows it's bad we're not going to waste time it's a bad melody we're going to move on we both have the same goal in mind that's good I mean honesty is always the best policy but what's that saying you know your sibling will give you a kidney if you needed it but you're not borrowing my charger right Perfect example. Yes, exactly. Um, right. So listen, your album is gearing up to be released 26th of March, I believe. OK, Orchestra, right. tell me a bit about it. What can we expect from it? Um, I think it's uh, it's definitely the most extreme sounding music we've ever made, um, meaning like it's the fastest, happiest song, uh, you know, on the album. It's the bang is definitely the most like evil, dark sounding song we've ever made. There are some like some of the saddest, most tear jerking songs. I think we're really expanding what AJR is comfortable doing. And that's that's a really fun feeling for us. And is it kind of weird for you guys not to be able to actually promote this album on foot and be able to perform to live audiences and get their reaction? Is that strange for you to adjust to? It's devastating. Oh, absolutely. That was our favorite. That's the most exciting thing when you're... Um, and of course it will happen eventually, but but that's the most exciting thing when you're writing an album. It's like, and you make the the banger track or the, you know, the anthem track. And it's like, I can't wait for the people to sing this back to us, you know? And then we realize, oh no, when is that gonna happen? You know, so there's that, there's that moment of sadness. But but we are we are announcing yeah. a, a tour for 2022. Oh, but good. that's that, that's <laughs> yeah. breaking news. Keep it, keep it hush on the recorded Zoom that we're doing right now. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> I just got an exclusive. So you have got a tour plan for 2022, knowing that at least gigs are a year away how exciting is that yeah that, oh, that's so that's cool. been our saving grace really and I think it will be for the fans to to just know okay even if it's in the future there's a date on the calendar when I get to see this live and that's a fun feeling for us and will you be coming over to Ireland maybe have to we love Ireland and Dublin last time we were there I so like my best friend here is Irish and his, his dad grew up in, in Dublin last time I was there I went early before the show and I went to his grandmother's house and she cooked us the most authentic Irish breakfast. It was like the greatest morning I've ever had on tour. So we have to come back and and, and do that again. You have to do it for the Irish breakfast. Yeah. You have to have yeah. your oh, bacon, so good. Your, your super value sausages, your yeah. eggs, no beans. Oh, certain kind of bread that she that she got. Uh, Sourdough. 
Yeah, but it was like a certain brand that they like, I don't know, they, they oh. like raved over it. Brennan's. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. That's yeah. The one. Oh, I think that's so. Yeah. 100%. Yep. Brennan's or Irish Pride, you yep. can't go wrong with either of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we have to schedule in the date for you guys to come back over here so you can <laughs> get your Irish brekkie before your shows again. You've got so many Irish yep. fans as well. I mean, I know on my show, The Hit Mix, people request it all the time. And when it first kind of came out, so many messages in just going, what is this song? Who are these people? Where can I hear it again? Oh, you know, cool. such a great reaction to it. We love playing it. Um, what is, I suppose, the number one thing? Bar gigs, that's the obvious one. That's the one that we're all missing so much. But what's the big thing for you that you're really missing and you can't wait to do after we can resume some sort of normality after this is over? Seeing movies oh, God, in, yeah. in the movie theater. You really take it for granted when you're there. I yeah. treat it so casually, but it's just like, oh, you, every time we have one across the street, every time we walk by, it's like, oh, please. Just the smell of popcorn, honestly, yeah. alone. Yeah. That's all I want, just to be able, because it's it's one of those, it's kind of a night out, but it's not really. You can go into the cinema, yeah. disappear into the dark. Yeah. You can just look like a foot. You don't have to dress up. Popcorn, exactly. Maltesers and the same thing and just right. <laughs> hours of just complete darkness. I know I'm that's one of exactly. my big things that I'm also not having to dodge people on the sidewalk. That's kind of annoying me now. So I'm ready to have uh, that. Totally, totally over with. Um so listen, Lance, we really want to play your new tune, Way Less Sad on FM 104. Would you do me the honors and introduce it for me, please? Yes. Hey, we are AJR and this is our song Way Less Sad on FM 104. <laughs> 